Hello everyone, this is group B2 and our topic for today's presentation is on the development of the CNS. Let's begin the presentation by taking a look at the case study. A 38-year-old pregnant woman arrives to the ER after her water breaks. After taking her history, it was found that she missed most of her prenatal care appointments but remembered that one of her blood tests was high and believed that she was 4 weeks early. Initial examination demonstrates 6 cm of cervical dilation and increasing strength and frequency of contractions. Fetal heart rate monitoring reveals deceleration indicative of fetal distress, prompting delivery via cesarean section. The baby boy was delivered and had reassuring APGAR scores. He is able to move his head and arms, but the lower legs are motionless and contorted. Further examination reveals a 3 cm fluid filled sac in the middle lower back. A thin walled cystic mass arises in the surrounding skin of the upper lumbar spine. Mid hydrocephalus is noted. Diagnosis The mass is diagnosed as spina bifida. The imaging also revealed an associated chiari malformation and mild pilocephalus. Before we go into detail about spina bifida, let's take a look at how the regular development of the CNS takes place. Neurulation is the formation of the neural tube from the embryonic ectoderm. It follows the castellation in which cells migrate to the interior of the embryo, forming the three germ layers. During the third week of gestation, the notochord induces the differentiation of ectoderm into the neuroectoderm, which then thickens to form the neural plate. The neural plate has broad cranial and narrow caudal ends that form the brain and spinal cord, respectively. The neural plate becomes depressed along the midline with raised edges on either side. This results in the formation of neural groove and folds. This groove becomes deeper through the third week of gestation. Fusion of two edges of the neural plate extends cranially and caudally starting in the middle. Ultimately, neuropores disappear, leaving a closed neural tube. Anterior neuropore closes around 25th day, beginning of 4th week to 20th somite stage. The location of anterior neuropore is represented in the adult as lamina terminalis that forms the anterior boundary of the third ventricle. The closure of posterior Posterior neuropore occurs at approximately day 28 of embryonic development, end of fourth week to 25th somite stage, which marks the formation of neural tube. In the adult, the posterior neuropore represents the terminal ventricle present in the proximal 5 to 6 mm of phylum terminale. Non closure of neural tube leads in neural tube defect. After the neural tube is formed, it begins to differentiate into different regions. The first major differentiation occurs at around week 4 of intrauterine life, when the neural tube starts to bend at the junction of the brain and spinal cord, forming the cephalic flexure. This bend divides the neural tube into the cranial and caudal portions. The cranial portion of the neural tube differentiates into three primary vesicles, which are the prosencephalon or the forebrain, mesencephalon or the midbrain, and rhombencephalon or the hindbrain. The primary vesicles vesicles further differentiate to form the secondary vesicle. During growth, primary vesicles develop to give rise to the secondary vesicle. However, secondary vesicle develops into specific parts of the nervous system. Following are the secondary vesicles in the brain. Telencephalon, diencephalon, mesencephalon, metencephalon and myelencephalon. Telencephalon and diencephalon arise from the prosencephalon. Telencephalon gives rise to the two cerebral hemispheres, whereas diencephalon gives rise to the optic vesicle, pineal gland, thalamus and hypothalamus, posterior hypophysis. Mesencephalon gives rise to the midbrain, whereas the metan and myencephalon arise from the romencephalon. Metencephalon gives rise to the pons and cerebellum, myencephalon gives rise to the medulla oblongata. Fifth week and sixth week, usually around 40 to 43 days, the first electrical brain activity begins to occur. During 8th and 9th week, the cerebrum begins its development. Neurons proliferate and begin their migration throughout the brain. The anterior commissure, which is the first interhemispheric connection, also develops. Reflexes appear for the first time during this period. The frontal and temporal poles of the brain are apparent during weeks 12 to 16 and the frontal pole, which becomes the neocortex, grows disproportionately fast when compared with the rest of the cortex. The surface of the cortex appears flat throughout the third month, but by the end of the fourth month, indentations appear. These develop into the salsa and gyre of the cerebrum. The different lobes of the brain also become apparent, and neurons continue to proliferate and migrate throughout the cortex. By week 13, the fetus has begun to move. Around this time, the corpus callosum, the massive collection of fibers that allow for communication between the hemispheres, begins to develop. 
In third trimester, major developments happen in fetal range ripples and weight. There is rapid development of neurons. By 28th week, nerves connect with their designated organs. Myelin speeds up the signaling process. Myelination continues in birth till adulthood. The salsa and gyre of cerebrum develops. And the cerebrum is separated into right and left brain. The central sulcus begins at 13th week. Callosal sulcus from 14th week. Lateral sulcus prior to occipital and calcarine fissure from 18th week. By 22 weeks, the complex array of salsa and gyre resembling the adult brain develops. By 30 to 32 weeks, most of the main salsa and gyre could be seen. By 8 months, the cognitive development begins with the auditory cortex, visual cortex and Broca's area. The average brain size of a newborn is approximately a quarter of that of a fully grown adult. At birth, only the lower portions of the nervous system are fully developed, ensuring the vital body functions and swallowing or operation. The remainder of the brain's development, which is still in its primitive stages, is shaped by the environment and experiences of the infant during its early years. Within the first year, the brain doubles in size, reaches 80% of the adult size by age 3, and is nearly fully developed at 90% by age 5. By the age of 25, the brain has attained full maturity. Alright, now that we've learned a little bit about the normal development of the CNS, let's revisit our case on spina bifida. Spina bifida, Latin for split spine, is a developmental congenital disorder caused by the incomplete closing of the embryonic neural tube. Some vertebrae overlying the spinal cord are not fully formed and remain unfused and open. If the opening is large enough, this allows a portion of the spinal cord to protrude through the opening in the bones. There may or may not be a fluid-filled sac surrounding the spinal cord. Spina bifida malformations fall into three categories. Spina bifida occulta, spina bifida cystica with meningocele, spina bifida cystica with myelomeningocele. The most common location of the malformations is the lumbar and sacral areas. Other clinical defects of development of CNS are anencephaly. Anencephaly might also be caused by a combination of genetic and other factors such as the things that the mother comes in contact with in the environment during her pregnancy. Symptoms are absence of the cerebrum and cerebellum. Signs. Infant born with anencephaly are usually blind, deaf and ne never attain consciousness. Diagnosis Anencephaly can often be diagnosed before birth through an ultrasound examination. Treatment There is no cure or standard treatment for anencephaly. An abnormal buildup of cerebrospinal fluid in the ventricles deep within the brain. Encephalocele It is caused due to the failure of formation of skull cap along with the protrusion of brain in meninges. Anencephaly it's a rare and complex neural tube defect involving the occiput and inion resulting in extreme retroflexion of the head variably combined with occipital encephalocele or rachiscesis of the cervical or thoracic spine. And that's all for our B2 presentation. Hope you all had a wonderful time learning about the development of CNS. Thank you.